In this video, we're going to look at the NITI closing coil used in extraction cases to close the extraction space. And it can go one of two ways. You can pro, uh, protract the back teeth forward, or you can retract the front teeth backwards. So it just depends on what the case needs or what the anchorage is and so on and so forth. So the armamentarium for it, of course, uh, is a math outlier to do the twisting of the ligature, a pin and ligature cutter to cut it, and a how plier to crimp the hook shut if you need to. We have ligature wires over here, and I have two nine tie coils here, and I have a 9 and a 12 millimeter. This is the 9 and this is the 12. I'll show it to you in close up in a minute. And here's the ruler, <clears throat> the nickel titanium ruler. And let me change the zoomer here so that you can see this better. And it's a double-ended, double-sided instrument. So there's the 9 millimeter end. And here's the 12 millimeter end, and as I said, it's double sided, so you can use it right and left no matter which coil force you have. And it's been explained in the lecture that if possible, you want to use the longest coil that you can, so you try and use the 12 millimeter coil whenever you can to do that because it has a longer range of activation. And I have one right here, so this is the this is the 12, and you can see it's a pre-made spring with closed coils and it's got steel ends on it and those ends are made to fasten <clears throat> onto the molar tube and you're going to fasten the other end with a piece of ligature wire. So I would think it would be intuitively obvious how to do this but many doctors have the question about how do I attach it and I'll see if I can do it here in front of you and here I'm going to insert the ligature wire through the hole trying to look through the camera as I do this. That's why it's a little hard to do. And then you place it on the ligature wire, and then you now have that. And you could use this ligature wire. You could cut it into many little pieces. I'll just use the whole thing for right now. You give it a couple of twists, and then this is how you would carry it to the oral cavity. And the long end here would be hooked on the molar tube, and this end is going to be hooked on the keyhole loop. And then the section one and section two mechanics that's pretty much how you're limited to do that so here we have a molar hook and then I have a keyhole loop and today in your system you'd be on 19 by 25 keyhole and I don't have any teeth extracted on here so you'll have to pretend with me that I have some tooth like a four extracted and then here we're going to fasten this onto the loop on the molar or the hook if you will and then one leg goes under and one leg goes over of the ligature wire. And then we do the twist, twist, twist. And we pull that spring up. And can you see how, as I activate it, the string the spring would be getting uh, stretched more tightly. So hold that up here. And now I'm going to do the twist, twist, twist with the math outlier. I'll try and get this in focus for us. Sorry, the depth perception is kind of weird on this thing. So, all right, so that's how that's basically installed. And then what you're going to look for, what we're looking for here is how do we activate the spring using the ruler? And you get basically steps uh, one, two, three, and four. And let me show you how this is designed to work. And here this can be staying outside the mouth, this big long pigtail. And very frequently this is a, this is a two-handed procedure. You're using a 12 millimeter coil right now. So what we're going to do is you butt the, the ruler up against the molar tube like that. And then you see right now the windings of that coil don't even reach the step one. So you need the step right here on the winding where the ruler is. That needs to reach the step indicated over here for the coil to be activated, oops, activated properly. And so again, you hook this, uh, set that up against the molar tube like that and then you stretch, stretch, stretch until it goes out there. So what I'm going to give you right now is I'm going to give you a step two activation and <clears throat> I will pull on this and clinically you simply wind this up. You simply wind this up until the windings go to the step indicated like where you would where you'd like it to be. And now we'll check it and so I'll see if I had a third hand. I could be having my dental assistant do this with me. And you can see the windings on the coil. The windings on the coil are at step two right now. 
and it's not the it's not the eyelet it's the windings on the coil and let me zoom this up just a little bit higher so we can see that better in the light and here we go so butt that up against the molar tube and then you can see that the windings are at the level of that step two and then let me do a step three for you and the step three is going to extend up here in front of that tooth so a step three and step three four moves back teeth forward and step two moves <clears throat> front teeth back that's the pos system and we keep stretching that coil and you can feel it's getting a lot more tension in it now as i stretch that and that might be just a tad too far so it's the windings of the coil it's not the eyelet on there that is doing the the measuring you're going to measure to the end of the windings of the coil so again in a bigger zoom go up there and uh, it's almost a step three activation <clears throat> I need to go hmm, say another three quarters of a millimeter to get to a step three activation So pull on that again so a couple more twists Again, with the 12 millimeter end on there put that up against the molar tube and then get that zoomed up and it's still not quite to a three millimeter step but it's clearly more than two so I'm going to keep going and another nice thing to do you could if you had a really sharp uh, fine point marker like a sharpie you could mark the arch wire and then you could set this down and then you can pull it directly but I don't have the marker and I don't have a dental assistant because this is just a demo model and then I keep pulling that spring keep activating it and that should be pretty close so that goes up here and in the light that's perfect okay so doctors you see the windings right there are at the step three so this would be to move the back teeth forward. So I sh I've shown you step two and step three. But basically, that's how you operate this thing. And depending on the bracket, sometimes you can slide this under the wire. But this one doesn't fit underneath there. The end of the ruler is kind of thick. So this is what you would do. And then every month, you're just going to hold the ruler up here and make sure you're at the same activation. So you're looking at a step three right now. So then what you're going to do is cut this and tuck it back underneath there so that you can dig it out next month and then do more activation. And you could imagine if you've extracted an eight millimeter tooth here, you keep going and you're, as you're closing the space, you're going to run out of space and this eyelet will hit the keyhole. Therefore, you will not have any more activation possible. So what you're going to do then is just change it to a nine millimeter coil and a nine millimeter coil, of course, is three millimeters shorter. And then for that one, you're going to use the, the 9 millimeter end. So don't confuse that with the 12 millimeter one. But when possible, you use a 12 because it has a longer range of activation, meaning you could let the patient go home uh, for maybe two months instead of coming back every month because you're just closing space. And let's say a patient continues to knock this off the hook by toothbrushing so I can smash the end of that hook shut right there. And for that, I'm going to use a, a Halplier. And then I put the half wire across here and I go across the superior tie wings like that and then smash the hook and you can see it's quite malleable. It's a soft material and I bend it up like so. And then that keeps it from falling off the hook. Can everybody see that? Where I have it closed and you can continue to close it a little bit more if you wish. And then that makes it much more resistant to, to falling off the wire. And here it, it almost never falls off this because it's got so much tension on it in a step three or step four. But even in a step two, it still works great. Then you cut the distal end flush like you normally would. And what, excuse me, what, how much wire you see out the distal end is how much extraction space is closed in that month. So remember, doctors, it's step two moves front teeth back and step three, four moves back teeth forward. So you clip and tuck right here and then you're all done. And then obviously we're going to do the other side as well. So that's the installation. It should be pretty easy for you. Dental assistants can do this once you train them, but you have to learn this whole assembly, this whole trick yourself. So it's the windings. I'll see if I can point to that 
if I can find a sickle curette easily in here. And, uh, here's my sickle curette. So the spot you're looking for to go to the step on the ruler is the end of the windings right there. Right? So where that sickle curette is, that's the ruler spot. So let me show you that again here. And I have a, a still PowerPoint that shows you this as well. And I think I got it pretty close a minute ago when I did this. I'm trying to get it up here where we can see better. Yeah, so that looks like a step three right there. And you know, it's pretty lenient if you're like half a millimeter off. It's not going to be the end of the world. So, Okay, docs, I hope that was helpful for you. Remember, use a 12 when you can. And when it runs out of gas, then use a 9. And you should be all good. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. And I hope that was helpful.